How do I wash my running shoes and why do I do it after every run? is probably a comment that I see the most across all of my videos since I first mentioned that I wash my running shoes after every run sometime last summer. Since then, it's become one of the most requested videos on this channel. Now, the process that I use is pretty basic. I'm gonna walk through it in this video. It's not magical, but I'll walk through some of the do's and don'ts, why I do it, and some things to keep in mind in taking care of your running shoes. To say that I was surprised by the interest in this topic was, you know, a bit of an understatement. I thought everyone washed their shoes, maybe not every run, but pretty frequently. But I'm finding out via the comments of my channel that most people don't wash their shoes at all. And I didn't always wash my shoes either. Many, many years ago, I would just, you know, come back from a run, close the door, kick my shoes off by the front door on the shoe mat, and that was that. I wouldn't think about anything about the shoes until they either got so disgusting that I didn't want to put them on anymore or they literally were just dead and I needed to buy a new pair. But sometime, I think around 2017 to 2018, specifically, I think when I got the Vaporfly 4% from Nike, I wanted to take better care of my shoes. So I started washing my Vaporfly 4% after every run. Now, I lived in New York City at the time and New York City is gross. Most urban cities are, but New York City specifically is, is kind of gross. And I wanted to take care of the foam because back then in 2017-18, Zumex foam was very delicate. It's still a little delicate now in 2024, but way back then it was really delicate. So I wanted to clean it. I wanted to get all the road grime off from the exposed foam. If you ever ran in Vaporfly 4%, you know how much that outsole just got destroyed and picked up grime, if you know, you know. And I really started there, but I only really washed my race shoes for many years. Sometime around 2020, I moved my gear closet around in my apartment in New York City, and it was kind of in our living area, so I needed to keep things clean. Also, I come from cycling, and cyclists know that keeping your bike and all your gear as clean as possible is good for performance, but also for maintenance. It just makes sure everything works better. So I think I've always carried that over into running as well. So when I had my gear closet in our living space, I just needed to keep everything clean. I didn't want disgusting, stinky shoes in there. So I started washing every shoe after every run. And the main reason for that is to keep the performance of the shoe. Now, I'm not the type of runner who needs to get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles or kilometers out of a pair of running shoes, but I want to maintain the performance of the like new shoe as long as I can. And if I can extend that life to 100 or 200 or 300 kilometers, that's great. That's the main reason that I wash my shoes after every run, why I started many years ago. Now, as a content creator here on YouTube, I need to be able to access shoes, you know, pull them into a video, kind of shoot like I'm doing now, have B-roll, have them on my desk occasionally just to kind of keep an eye on them, like, you know, think through what I want to say about them. So keeping them clean also makes a lot of sense for me. Lastly, my space here is fairly limited where I currently live and my wife and I travel a lot, so I'm always throwing running shoes into a suitcase or into a backpack or something like that. So having them clean and kind of ready to travel at any moment is a good thing. I just don't want disgusting shoes. But the primary reason is to extend the life of the shoe. And how cleaning your shoes extends the life of your shoe or extends the performance of your shoe is basically you're removing all the oils and salts from your sweat and the road grime. You're just removing all of the debris and oils and the salt from your body from the materials, from the upper materials, from the foams, and getting all the road grime and whatever got stuck into the outsole out of the outsole. That's going to maintain the life and the performance of the shoe much longer. That, I think, is the central thing as to why I always wash my shoes after every single run. Additionally, that's very important where I live here in Taipei, Taiwan, because it's a subtropical environment, which means it is very hot and very, very humid here all the time. So I sweat a lot when I run, so my shoes often just fill with sweat. So all those oils and the sweat and the salt just get into everything. So if I can get all of that out of the shoe, and then more importantly, dry the shoe out, that will extend the performance of the shoe as well. Because if you let your shoes sit wet and nasty with all the oils and salts, 
all the adhesives, all the materials, and the foams eventually are going to break down, and the performance of the shoe is going to severely suffer. A couple things that I do not do when washing shoes is I never ever have put a pair of shoes, running shoes, or any kind of shoes into a washing machine. Just will never do that. Even if you run the cycle on cold, the slamming of the barrel of the washing machine and how the shoes are getting just tortured in there, it's horrible for any pair of shoes, let alone it's horrible for the washing machine. So I never ever do that. The other thing I never, ever, 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 ever do, and you should never do ever either, even if you are comfortable putting your shoes in a washing machine, which you shouldn't, especially performance running shoes, is put them in the dryer. The heat from the dryer is the absolute worst thing you can ever do to a shoe because it melts the adhesives and the glues, it erodes the foams in the shoe, it will destroy a lot of the uh, synthetic or nylon-based materials in the uppers, it's just the worst possible thing you can do to a pair of running shoes. Additionally, you can find things like this online everywhere. The brand doesn't matter. The spec doesn't matter. These are all around 20, 30 bucks. What these are are shoe dryers. But you should never buy one of these either because essentially what they are is a low powered hair dryer that's shooting hot air out of both these sides where you put the shoes on. You don't want to dry your shoes, especially performance running shoes, with hot air. Never do that. Also, never put your shoes in front of the fire, in front of the radiator, in front of a heater to dry. It's just the heat will destroy your shoes faster than anything else you can do to your running shoes. Now, the process that I use to actually wash my shoes is pretty simple. I bring them into the shower with me post-run. Now, for the purposes of this video, no one wants to see that, trust me. So I'm actually going to be washing the shoes in a sink, but it's the same basic fundamental process. And the starting point for that process is the soap that I use. Now, I use two types of soap generally for washing my shoes. The one that I use most frequently is Dr. Browner's Prier Castilli soap. Now, this is just a simple soap. The scent that you use doesn't really matter. I like peppermint. And this soap is pretty much available any country that I've traveled to, though it can be more expensive in some places than others. But what this is, is a very simple, mild soap. This is what I use to wash myself. So it's just what I use to wash my shoes as well. The other thing that I have used in the past, I don't use it as often anymore, is just a good hand wash detergent. Now, the one I'm showing here is one that I buy here in Taiwan, but the brand doesn't really matter. Hand wash detergents actually rinse easier than using a detergent meant for a machine. So the important thing with either one of these soaps, and often if I'm in a hotel when I'm traveling and I didn't bring any of the Dr. Browners or hand wash soap, which I often do travel with, I'll just use whatever soaps in the hotel in the shower uh, to wash my shoes. But the most important thing with any of these soaps, and one of the reasons I like Dr. Browners and the hand wash so much, is that they rinse very well. And rinsing the shoes, not only rinsing all of the sweat and salt and oils from your body out of them, but also rinsing all the soap or detergent out of them is key. So having a soap or detergent that's easy to rinse out is pinnacle to this entire process. Now let's go through this process. We'll go through this at 2x. Now this is a shoe after about a 14k run. This is typically a dirty running shoe to me. This is what you know a shoe looks like here after a run in Taiwan. Um, it was a little wet out today, but mostly kind of just grimy. So what I start with is I start rinsing them. I take the insole out as quickly as possible and I soak the shoe. I just try to get everything rinsed and soaked. Again, remove the insole, soak the shoe. Now, get a sponge ready and that's really the only tool that I use once the shoes are completely soaked. Now, here's where I use the soap. And this is a pretty standard amount. Um, I don't I don't know how to describe that, but it's a pretty small amount of soap, actually. And what I'll do is I'll just lather up the shoe. Now I'm using the sponge side of the sponge. And then when I need to scrub, I'll use the scrubber side. I like the scrubber uh, type sponge. And I'm not really grinding in there. I'm just trying to get all the grime out of the exposed foam. In these Hoka's, uh, this EVA foam does pick up a lot of road grime. So it is important to grind to uh, uh, pull it out and, and wipe it out and scrape it out. Now I'll rinse the shoe and I'll go back and look for any areas that I missed. Sometimes I'll go with the grain of the tread of the shoe, which is important for exposed foam. 
And again, I'm just trying to get all the grime out and then I'll go over the shoe uh, a couple times and I'll just start to rinse. And I'll do this a few times. This pair wasn't super dirty, but I will always just try to put water in the shoe and I'll always try to drain it out of the toe area of the shoe so that it doesn't pack into the foam of the um, heel counter. So again, lathering up the shoe, getting in there, scrubbing. I think the pressure is, is pretty moderate. I'm not really trying to like break the foam. I'm just trying to get all the grime out of that foam. Um, sometimes going with the tread, sometimes not, you know, going with any kind of grooves or hatching. And again, just wipe the shoe down. Just make sure everything's kind of getting a lot of the uh, soap in it. I'll put some lather in the shoe, go back, you know, any spots that I miss, rinse it here and there. Um, and sometimes I'll repeat this a few times. Now, if this was a trail shoe, I would have probably hosed off all the caked off mud out in the yard and I would have brought in here and done the same process, but I'll fill the shoe in and then I drain it out the toe. So what I'm trying to do is get all the detergent out of there. Generally, I put them together, you know, fill them with water. Again, I'm just trying to rinse them as well as possible, move the water around, and then I put them to drain toe down. And I'll talk about that in a bit. I also wash the insoles, any leftover soap that's on the sponge, I'll go in there and I'll wipe them down accordingly and rinse them. Now what I'm doing here is I'm actually trying to squeeze all the water out of the foam. You can't really see it from either angle, but um, this is important to get any of that water that's trapped in the foam that's generally around the heel counter out of the shoe. Now what you couldn't actually see from either of those angles was that what I'm trying to do is all of the water that gets trapped in the foam that's in the uh, ankle padding and the Achilles flare and puffy tongues this is a peg 41 which has a lot of foam back here and a puffy tongue is I'm trying to squeeze all that out of there and if it's a puffy tongue I'll take the tongue and I'll squeeze the water out as well because you don't want water sitting in this foam back here and generally the, the heel area of a running shoe is where most of the foam is in the upper now I dry the shoes heel down but what you don't want is you don't want a lot of water pooling back here because the ankle area of the shoe and the heel area of the shoe there's a lot of material back here there's a lot of adhesives holding this all together and this is a sensitive area for the foot so you don't want these materials coming apart tearing puffing up all of that stuff so the primary area that i'm trying to dry on the upper of a running shoe is this heel area that's why i'm squeezing all the excess water out of all this foam another important detail is after i've rinsed the shoe i'll always put them toe side down for about five to ten minutes to drain all of the water out of the inside of the shoe because generally the toe area is the most open of the upper so all the water will drain out of there because again i'm trying to get as much water out of the inside of the shoe before i actually put them up to dry so none of it pools in the heel now this is the process i use to dry the shoes this is a little section under the sink in our bathroom and i literally just have a little floor fan and i put my shoes in front of it heel down as you can see angled so they pick up as much wind insoles also pulled out so they're drying and i'll just let them sit here for three four maybe five hours it really depends on how humid it is outside now my little fan setup is i think nice to have but it's definitely necessary for me here in taiwan because it is always humid here so if i don't put them in front of a fan they could take all day and sometimes all night to dry especially trainers you know that are much more cushioned have a lot more padding in the upper those shoes will take forever to dry. You want the shoe to dry as quickly as possible. So here, I do need that fan. Now, shoes like Vaporflies, Adidas, Adi Zero shoes, the Metaspeeds from Asics, they will dry much faster because the uppers are synthetic and they don't hold a lot of material and a lot of water. There's not a lot of foam there. But a big padded cushion trainer, like a Nimbus, for example, those could take all day to dry if I'm not putting a fan on them. Now, as I said at the beginning of the video, you don't want to use heat here. So you don't want to put them in the sun. You don't want to put them in front of the fire. You don't want to put heat here. You want cool or room temperature air from a fan blowing over them. Now, when I travel, if I'm in a hotel room, I will generally just put the shoes against the wall and go out and do whatever I need to do during the day because I generally run in the mornings because hotel rooms are generally air conditioned and pretty dry. So the shoes will dry pretty naturally on their own. If I'm in an Airbnb or something, usually I ask the host if they have a fan. If they don't, I'll go buy a cheap fan and just use it for the length of the trip, usually a couple weeks, maybe a month. Again, just to dry the shoes as quickly as possible. And if you are in a dry climate, then the shoes will also dry fairly quickly. But I still would say you want a fan to blow cool air onto the shoes so they dry 
uh, as evenly and quickly as possible because again, you don't want the water sitting in the foams, eroding the adhesives and just making the shoe generally fall apart. It's not as bad as all your sweat and oils from your sweat in there, but it's still not great for the shoe. So after it's washed, after it's rinsed, dry them as quickly as possible, but don't use heat. Never ever use heat. So there you go. It really is a simple process. There's nothing magical there. Basically, you don't want the salts and oils from your sweat sitting in them. So wash them as soon as you can after your run. Get the detergent in there. Get the oils out. Get the sweat out. Get the salts out. Rinse them. Uh, let them drain toe side down. Then squeeze any excess water out of the upper and then put them in front of a fan. Room temperature or cool air. Never hot. And dry them as quickly as possible and your shoes will last longer. Now I've been doing this for years, at least five years, and I've never had a problem. So again, this is a way that I use to extend the performance of my shoes. And by doing that, I do get longer life out of most of my shoes. And generally the shoes I feature here on the video, unless it's of initial impressions and I'm doing that initial B-roll before I run in the shoe, everything else I'm showing on this channel, like this Pegasus, this Pegasus has about 350 kilometers on it, but it's a shoe that I've washed and taken care of, so you don't really see that. So that's another thing. If you like the way your shoes look when they're new, keep them clean, wash them often, and you will see them stay intact for the length of your running life with them. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you find this content useful, consider subscribing. You'll see more content from me pop up in your feed. If not, drop a like on this video because it helps this channel continue to grow which I always appreciate. And with that, I'll catch you in the next one.